What's going on YouTube? I'm Harmon. This is Hanco Fab. This is my channel. And behind me is my 2002 E350. And I just thought I'd go over a few things on it. Uh, I did another video pertaining just to kind of once over of the build itself and where the van came from. If you didn't see that video, maybe go watch it or here's a little uh, kind of cliff note of it. Uh, this was a firefighter recovery vehicle used in Utah and I bought it with a bad transmission and they decommissioned the van. So I converted it to four wheel drive and did some other things to the rear axle assembly and suspension. And this is kind of a, some of the things I'm going to go over to on today is basically the rear axle assembly. And, and this one is basically the rear suspension assembly, what I did. So when you do a four wheel drive conversion on one of these vans and you use a modern front axle, the track width changes. The, the front axle width on the van has to increase pretty substantially. So the only way to accommodate that on the rear axle assembly is a lot of people put spacer blocks. Hey, there's my chicken. And a lot of people put spacer blocks um, behind the wheels to make sure the track width between front, front axle and rear axle matches. Um, I don't really like doing that. It's not the way I would go about doing it. Uh, especially for something that's going to weigh as much as this thing is going to weigh when most people fully build them out. They're quite heavy. Um, can it be done? Yes. Um, but it's just not something I feel comfortable doing. So this is what I did with mine. So the rear axle on this one is from a 2008 F250. Uh, 410 ratio. It does have 35 inch tires with a method 20 by nine wheel. The wheel assembly is from a 2005 and up uh, F250 offset. These ones I believe are a tw plus 20 offset wheel. And they're the standard eight on 170 millimeter bolt pattern. The rear springs are also 2008 F250. These are pro comp four inch lift springs that I use. And when you use a F250 spring that's from 08 and above, the spring itself is about 10 inches longer than the stock spring that's on a van. So the mount itself has to be moved. So you can see that this is the original back hole of the mount. This is where it used to be. So it had to move quite substantially to accommodate this new spring assembly. Uh, I like the new spring assembly for the lifted van or lifted applications because, because these ride a lot better. The spring is much longer, so it doesn't have that as harsh of ride as a typical short spring uh, like the vans have and the older F-250s like that guy over there. So you have to move the spring perch itself from this hole. You have to measure these out. And I have all the measurements to do this to convert one of these. So those are the springs I use with the Pro Comp four inch lift spring for an F-250 2008 and up. The other, the rear axle assembly is a 2008 full floater and to put one of these in a van obviously the van's frame is much wider than an f-250 frame so you can see the spring pad has to be moved so you can see the original this is the original bracket that mounted to the spring perch and you can see where it goes now. So 
that's one of the items that has to be taken care of. So you have to cut these off the rear axle, move them over right around an inch and seven eighths if I remember right. Check your pinion angle, have your ride height set. And then you can go ahead and you can weld these back to the axle. And that has to be obviously done on both sides. On the F-250s, they typically have one shot going one direction and the other shot going the other direction. Uh, on this van, I changed that. I flipped one around and rebolted it on. You can see right there, right there. And then I made it so it has normal bolt-on shocks in the rear. They both face forward. So one of the other items when you do a lifted application is I like to not use blocks, uh, lift blocks, if you can get away from doing that. So that leaves your actual, you know, U-bolt assemblies for the spring pack much shorter. And there's much less chance of them coming loose and this thing moving in and out back and forth. But that's personal preference. Um, I have seen block assemblies work just fine for hundreds of thousands of miles. One of my first F-250s had lift blocks that were like a three inch lift block and they work just fine. But when I'm doing a lift, uh, I prefer to use a spring assembly to get it the correct ride height. So as for the brake line assembly, the brake line assembly is for an F-250 application and it's adapted and actually bolts right up to the factory E250 or E350 fitting you can see right here. So I just had to add a brass adapter and then the factory line bolted right up, no problem. But this is how I went about doing it. Some people go about doing it differently. They'll put spacer blocks in and lift it that way or they'll put spacers on the wheels uh it's just not something i wanted to do when you're when you're doing one of these rear axle or front axle swaps you basically have to put a set of adapter spacers on the rear if you're going to run a 8 on 170 millimeter bolt pattern in on the front axle so then you have to accommodate the rear axle so do you put a spacer block behind the wheel to space out the wheel and change the bolt pattern to eight on 170 millimeter. That way you can run a typical super duty wheel. So that's where I think doing an axle swap works out the best. Not saying it's for everybody, but that's how I go about doing it. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please uh, hit the subscribe button or the bell button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And also, please uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Hinko Fab.